Hi, my name is Stuart Turton. I'm the author of Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, which is probably the weirdest book you're going to read this year. It's a Agatha Christie novel set in a Groundhog Day loop with some quantum leap body swapping. So every time our protagonist wakes up, he's in the body of a different suspect, and it is just fundamentally a strange thing. But um, yeah, so I'm here in uh, Watstone's Greenwich today, and I want to introduce you to three books that really shaped the making of my book. Okay, let's crack on. So truthfully, anything from this Agatha Christie aisle could have worked for us, but I'm going to introduce you to the first Agatha Christie I read, which is The ABC Murders. So in this book, the uh, the murderer uh, keeps sending Hercule Poirot telegrams announcing where the crime is going to be committed, and they all follow an alphabetical order. This is the first book I ever read where I bought it and then had to run home immediately to read it. I was so engrossed by the concept and how she was going to pull off this amazing idea, and somehow she actually did. It's wonderfully brilliant it's also written in the first person and the third person um which is something she doesn't always do but also kind of taught me how to mess around with structure a little bit and that a book didn't have to be one type of thing even an agatha christie book so i owe agatha a lot as you will discover if you read my book so you find me just casually walking towards the next book in our list uh which is the trial by franz kafka um, this may seem initially like quite a weird book to have influenced my weird book, but I think anybody who's read the two will kind of understand why this was an influence. It is just really unnerving uh, from the first page to the last page. So it's about a guy who is put on trial for a crime that's never explained to him, he's sentenced for a crime that's never explained to him, and he's punished for a crime that's never explained to him. And for him, he just seems to be going about his normal life. And this idea of just being relentlessly assaulted by strange occurrences um, really does feed into what I want to do with The Seven Deaths. It keeps the reader constantly unnerved, you're constantly off balance, you're constantly being pushed back. But in my novel, eventually, my character begins to understand what's happening to him and why these things are occurring, whereas Franz never bothers with that. Um, and I really, really love the fact that he did that, but I could never have written that book because it would have drove me crazy. So, yeah, the second book that influenced Seven Deaths is Franz Kafka's The Trial with this epic cover. Uh, the third book on our influences for Seven Deaths is The Lovely God of Small Things by Anarity Roy. So... I am definitely not pronouncing her name right, so I'm very sorry about that, but I love this book. This is my all-time favourite ever book, um, and what I love about it was this is the first time I ever read a book where I realised that you could just completely screw the structure of a novel, that a novel didn't have to be chronological, that it didn't even have to have make any sense the first time you read it, that you could demand a reader read a novel a second and a third time, but you had to give them something in return to do that. So make it incredibly beautiful. And this book is incredibly beautiful. It's poetry, every line of it is sense. I don't know why I'm saying this. Everyone's read this book already. But if you haven't, please read this book. Um, I can't even describe what it's about because we'd be here for the next two hours. It's just completely wonderful. And this idea of messing around with structure is something that really fed into Seven Deaths. It's something I wanted to play with. And I think I did, but on a much smaller way than this novel. But um, I would advise you, if you've not read this and you've not read mine, read this one first and then read mine. And that's, <laughs> that's I can't give any higher compliment than that. So, yeah, Aranati Roy, The God of Small Things.